Welcome to February's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is Roman 2 integer. Roman numerals are represented by seven different symbols. Here they are, here are their values. We want to convert a Roman numeral, a string format, into an integer. Okay, and I'm not going to go too into it because hopefully you know how Roman numerals work. Now, if it wasn't for these situations where 4 is written as I, IV instead of IIII, uh, this would be very easy, right? All we need to do is go down the string and just add up all these numbers um, that are represented by these values. Uh, but the tricky part is when these sort of values happen. So what's an insight here that we can take? Uh, one of the things we can realize is the order will, will matter. And really the situation that is kind of what we are concerned about is when a lower value is in front of a greater value. Normally, the lower values are are after the higher values. So like here, if, it, if the V was in front of here, it'd just be easy, just 5, 1, 1, 1, right? But it's situations where like 1 is before the 5, where we know that we actually need to subtract the 1 from here. Now, to give you a big hint, uh, the problem is simpler by working back to front using a map. So the first thing we'll do is create a map. We know that we need that, so let's go ahead and create that. I'll call this lookup. Oops. And let's go ahead and make this into a map. Uh, I'm gonna just copy paste. And one second. So there we go. Now we have our map that represents the characters to the value. Uh, next thing we want to do is move backwards, right? Why do we want to move backwards? Well, um, if we can, if we move backwards, we could quickly figure out if we should be adding these values or we should be subtracting. Say that we had the numbers I5, like if we see as we move forward that the I comes after this or comes before this V, then we should actually subtract one. Okay, we can add the 5, no problem, but we just need to make sure that we subtract this one. But we just need to know that um, whether we we need some sort of condition to know whether we should subtract or add it. Uh, so if, since we're going to move backwards, I'll first initialize an n, and we'll say n equals uh, length of s, and I'm going to have my pointer, which will start at the very end, which would just be n minus 1. So while i is greater or equal to 0, what do we want to do? Well normally we just add to our answer let's output uh, output plus equals what look up s of i right this would be how we normally do it uh, subtract the i equals one and then return the output but we need to uh, figure out what do we do when we have situations like the lower number coming before the higher number okay so to take care of that what I'm gonna do is the first thing is uh, if we want to check the previous or it's, since we're going backwards it's, it's the uh, the index number after we can only do that from the second last position on right so the first thing we want to make sure is say hey if I is uh, less than n minus 1 and what we'll do is look ahead and say s of i, um, and this lookup of s of i, if this is less than the lookup of the one after, because uh, if that happens, then we should actually subtract this value. So this will be where we subtract. Otherwise, we always just add it. And hopefully, if you go through it, this starts making sense. Like here, we start by adding 5, but now the 1 comes, and we see that 1 is less than 5, so it's, we subtract 1, now it's a 4. Uh, then we add uh, what, uh, 100, right? And now uh, we see that the x is less than c, so we actually minus 10, now it's 94, and so on and so forth until it becomes 1994. So let's go ahead and test this out to make sure it's working. Oh, oh, of course, commas. Uh, 
All right, that looks like it's working, so let's go and submit it. And there we go, accepted. So at first, it's a little intimidating, but you know, once you start thinking about it a little bit, it's not that bad. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Don't trust me.